Hola y buenos dias. We have made it to our sixth country on our 50 country world adventure. We are in Spain and more specifically Madrid, Spain. And to kick off this video, we're going to go get some incredible Spanish food for lunch because we're only here for 48 hours. So with that, let's head out. our very first place to eat in Madrid and it's called Matador. It had really good reviews and apparently they have really great cured ham here. So this restaurant is kind of tapas styled which means you get a lot of small plates which is great because we can try a variety of different things. So the very first thing that we got is the tortilla española and this is basically a thick Spanish omelet. It's very traditional. It's made with eggs, potatoes, and onions and as you can see it is quite a thick fella. <laughs> I first want to note that their tapas here are actually pretty large portion sizes. I really wasn't expecting all of this and while we were ordering the server was like oh my gosh you're getting too much food because I guess in the U.S. when you get tapas or you go to a Spanish restaurant, they get pretty small portion sizes, but in Spain, they go big. <laughs> so the very first thing we got is Amon de Perico, and this is that black pig ham that I was telling you all about over in Portugal. They also have it here in Spain, and apparently Spain is the number one producer of dry cured ham. And so of course we had to get a huge platter of it and they also still use traditional methods to cure their ham. And then to pair with it, we got a very special cheese. Here is manchego cheese, which is Spanish sheep cheese, and it's made in the middle of Spain with manchego sheep's milk, and apparently it is very, very good, and I'm really glad that we found it because it's quite rare to come by. Um, so we're gonna give all of this a try. It looks so beautiful, and I'm living my charcuterie dreams here in Spain. So our charcuterie feast was surprisingly filling and we're now making our way to Parque de El Retiro, but apparently it is this enormous park that has a lot of different things to see. Hey Bubby, what do you see? There's so many fish in the water, like big ones. We have spent the last hour or so enjoying Madrid's largest park and it has been the most perfect autumn afternoon. The sun is shining and also the leaves are starting to change to a golden yellow and a clementine orange and since autumn is my favorite season, I've been loving it here. So overall, just really great to basking in the sunlight and enjoying some people watching time. I have to say, I did not expect Spain to be the place that would remind me so much of our time in the Northeast when the fall leaves were changing colors and we were first in the van and when we first started YouTube. But anytime that I see these colors change, it always does the trick and it brings me straight back to that time. Ah, oh, it's so nice. We just went inside the Palacio de Cristal, which is this simple yet delicate greenhouse that has beige archways and also glass windows lining the entire thing. And right now they have this gorgeous sculptural exhibition that showcases a number of different uh, wooden sculptures for mm -hmm. us to enjoy. And I have to say, our time in Madrid so far has been far more relaxing than I expected. Like yeah. I was expecting to just be like, all right, it's gonna be a very busy city. Mm -hmm. We're gonna eat amazing food. But being in this park today has really 
been so relaxing and it was so unexpected and greatly needed honestly after Absolutely. all the travel and what's really interesting is even though they do speak the Spanish language here and we have been hearing the Spanish language over in South America so mm -hmm. much it's interesting because Spain is indeed in Europe and so that means it brings a completely different ambiance and mm -hmm. a different feeling towards what we had originally associated with the Spanish language and so it's kind of nice to have a change of scenery and a change of feeling towards Spanish To end our first day here in Madrid, we've decided to go and get some churros. Not sure if it's actually just a very touristy thing to do, but they look really good and we want to give it a try. And we have decided to go to the most popular churro place in all of Madrid, so we're going to walk over there now. Oh, hello there. <laughs> Filling up our water bottle. I've become so accustomed to always bringing water because Seems like the States is the only place that will give you free water if you go to a restaurant. Churros, 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 churros. So we decided to come to this chocolateria because it's been open since 1894 and they have this nice melted chocolate cup and I'm so excited to get these out and try it. So what I really like is that they don't put any sugar on the churros so it makes the chocolate stand out even more and the churros are very chewy, very crunchy. Uh, it's a great little treat, and I believe people actually eat it mostly for breakfast. Yeah, it seems like it's yeah. in the morning. It's kind of... But I think it's a great midnight snack. <laughs> if you do come here, definitely bring a water bottle because we already drank half of our water bottle and we haven't even yes. finished our churros yet. I honestly don't think I would survive without water right now. It literally makes me so thirsty. Yeah, it's, it's very delicious. Sweet. <laughs> If you do want to buy water here, it's two euros and fifty cents, which is a little expensive for water, in my opinion. So just bring your water bottle. Well friends, we have made it back to our humble abode and we're gonna actually do some laundry. Hopefully it can dry overnight, and we are gonna see you guys tomorrow for day two in Madrid. Hello from day two in Madrid, Spain. Today we are going to the oldest restaurant in the entire world and <laughs> it's crazy i know this is actually the number one thing that we want to do in madrid spain for obvious reasons and this restaurant was actually opened back in 1725 meaning that it's almost 300 years old which is really crazy to think about but it is not just some old dingy restaurant that has very bad food it actually has world-renowned cuisine they've actually been making this thing called the suckling pig mm -hmm. for hundreds of years yeah. and they have not changed their recipe at all and they're even using the same wood-fired oven that is original from 1725. Yeah. So we're going to uh, pack up our stuff and head over there now to enjoy a really nice, um, and I guess you could say old-timey meal. Yes. So this restaurant is called Sobrino de Botan, and I made a reservation for us last night. And although we don't normally dine at restaurants that have three euro signs by its name, we did budget for this so that we could have this once-in-a-lifetime experience. in the oldest part of the entire restaurant, down in the wine cellar. So we 
got their two specialties, the suckling pig and the roasted lamb. And something that's really nice about the suckling pig is that it's been eaten since medieval times. It's called cochinillo asado. It is a pig that has a very crispy skin and very, very tender meat. And it is said to be the prized centerpiece of a traditional uh, Spanish meal. Of course, that would be the whole pig, but here we only have a little piece of it. Exactly how they described it. The meat is succulent and the skin is so crispy. Claire is an expert at cleaning the bones. Meanwhile, my plate is looking pretty bad. I have a rare talent for working the fork and knife. <laughs> Claire is deeply pondering her decision. Yeah, we just ate a ton of meat and two potatoes. So we just add on to the lack of vegetables with dessert. So we ordered some dessert, and the first thing that we got is the crema catalana, and it's basically a Spanish crepe brulee. And instead of infusing the custard with vanilla, they infused it with lemon rind and cinnamon, and it is served cold rather than warm. So it looks really good. It looks kind of like a planet, like Venus or Jupiter or something cool like that. And then the second thing that we got is kind of like their house cake. It's a cream layer cake, and it was highly recommended on their menu. quite a fabulous time at the restaurant and the owner was very kind to let us tour around the entire restaurant going up to the upper floors and just even seeing the kitchen where they prepare the food. And I have to say even more than the food itself just being in that restaurant made me just think about how old it was obviously. I just can't imagine the number of people that have eaten there yeah. and have experienced their own lives. Right there. and the amount of people that have cooked there yeah. have learned the recipes and the amount of people they've employed yes. over all these years. I think the wildest part is that it's still the restaurant itself like they haven't renovated mm -hmm. too much of it and I love seeing the old bricks and just smelling the history in the yes. walls. It was a wonderful experience and although yes it was pricey I think it was worth I'm spending the extra money to eat at the oldest restaurant in the entire world. Yes. But we're now at Plaza Mayor and I believe we're just going to walk around a little bit and then we're going to head to the market and yeah. see what they have to offer. Just like that, our 24 hours in Madrid are up. But I think we got a really good taste of what Spain has to offer just mm -hmm. because Madrid is our first destination. We've got so many more cities in Spain to explore. And yes. so if you would like to follow along on the adventure, definitely hit subscribe. We'd love to have you along with us while we travel through Spain and also as we complete our 50 country goal around the world. And with that, we will see you guys next time. Bye.